hello. I was just trying to calculate a mark. You see, my son, he got uh, 32 out of 40 for an English test. And I wasn't sure whether that was a good mark or a bad mark. But I just converted it to a percentage and discovered he got 80%. Now that's not bad, is it? 80% for an English test. Hmm, impressive. And then I looked at his Afrikaans mark. And that was 18 out of 30. And I actually calculated that to be 60%. Now, 60%, hmm, not too good. Although his Afrikaans are so bad, that 60%, I'm kind of happy with that. But did you notice that until I converted those marks into a percentage, I wasn't too sure whether they were good marks or bad marks. In fact, this session is all about converting things or converting marks to percentages. And that's what we're going to do now. Now, percentages is something we use every day. Not only in marks, and I know that when you guys get a test mark back, the first thing you want to know is, what is the percentage? Have I done well? Have I done badly? But we also use percentage in everyday life. For example, sometimes we could say, you know what? There's an 80% chance of rain today. Well, what does that mean? Well, 80% is quite a high chance, isn't it? So when I say there's an 80% chance of rain, what I actually mean is, there's a good chance it's going to rain today. If my son comes to me and he says to me, geez, Dad, ooh, I'm writing an Afrikaans test, uh, there's a 10% chance I'm going to pass. Well, that actually means there's a very good chance he's going to fail that test outright because 10% is not too high. So let's focus on percentages. Let's have a look here. So when I look at percentages, today or in this session, I'm going to look at how to find the unknown amount how to find the unknown percent, and how to find the unknown whole number. What do I mean by that? Well, when we look here, there are three parts to a percentage problem. There's the percent itself, so for example, 5% or 10%. There's the whole number. In other words, if I'm wanting to find 5% of 20, the 5% is the percentage, the 20 is the whole number. And then finally, the new amount is the answer to that 5% of 20. And the formula we use is quite simple, really. It's the percentage times the whole number or the number we're dealing with, and that will give me my new amount. Let's have a look at an example then. So, here's one. What is 18% of 300? Now, folk, the first thing we've got to say is this. We must remember that percentage we're dealing with a mark out of 100. Because percentage out of 100. So when I look at this, what is 18% of 300? The way I can rewrite this is quite simply this. What is 18 over 100? Now, in mathematical terms, the word of means times. So we're going to say 18% of 300. And then we just need to put that into our calculator and we'll get the answer. Now, folk, I'm a strong believer in the use of a calculator because a calculator is going to help you eliminate all those funny, careless mistakes that one tends to make in a test or in an examination. How many times haven't you got your test back? And you've looked at your test and gone, oh man, I knew that answer. I've just made a stupid mistake. Now, with the use of a calculator, that helps eliminate those stupid, silly mistakes. So, let's find our calculator. And we're going to say, right, with my calculator, I'm going to say 18 over 100, or 18 divided by 100, multiply that then, oops, let's just go out of there, multiply that then by 300. And we're going to push equals, and there's my answer, 54. So 18% of 300 is 54. Another way of saying that is if you got a test mark of 54 out of 300, that would be the same as saying, eh, you only got 18% for that test. Easy, isn't it? Now, 
Let's have a look at another example. Find the unknown percent. A group of 30 out of 150 learners represents the grade 12s in athletics. What percentage is this? Okay, so let's write this in mathematical terms. 30 out of 150. Now you know exactly how to write that. Because if your teacher tells you, hey, your test mark, you got 30 out of 150, you know it would mean this. You've got 30 out of 150. Cool? Now we want to change that 30 out of 150 to a percentage. How do we do it? We multiply by 100. Because percentage, when I hear the word percentage, the first thing that jumps to mind, ladies, it's not shopping, it's 100. Okay? So, hear the word percentage, the number 100 jumps to mind. So, 30 out of 150, changing it to a percentage, we're going to multiply that straight away by 100. And again, folks, let's take out our calculator and use our calculator to do that sum. So, we said we've got... 30 out of 150, we're going to then multiply that by 100, and we get an answer there of 20. So my answer is 20. Now, with percentage folk, we've got to use units. In the previous question, we asked you, what is a certain percentage? Let's go back and see it quickly. What is 18% of 300? Now, 18% of 300, we said was 54. If I said, what is 18% of 300 marks? We could say my answer is 54 marks. Or what's 18% of 300 people? My answer would be 54 people. But in this example we've just done, the question is asking us what percentage is 30 out of 150. So what's my unit? My unit is percentage. So 30 out of 150 is 20%. Easy. Let's have a look at another example. My uh, another one is this. Find the unknown whole number. So you get 40% for a test, okay? And you know that 40% is actually a mark of 28. But you don't know what the test is out of. So it's 28 out of something. But what's that something? And so what we're going to do now is we are going to find that unknown whole number. What was that test out of? So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say to you, right, so I have 40%. And I know that my 40% is the same as 28 marks. Agreed? Now what we're trying to find is we're trying to find, well, if 40% is 28, what is 100%? Here it is. What is 100% of that mark. Now, before I find 48, uh, uh, sorry, 100%, I need to find 1%. Now, I just love the number 1. Why? Because if I can change things to the number 1, then from 1, I can go to any number. What do I mean by that? Let's have a look here. So, I know 40% is 28. So let me try and find, well, what is 1%? Now, folk, I want you to think of something here. Let's pretend you've got a little brother or a little sister. In fact, we don't have to pretend. Maybe you do have a little brother or a little sister. Imagine if your parents came to you, okay? And they say to you, listen, we've decided to give your little brother an increase in pocket money. Cool. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to give them an extra 100 rand a week pocket money. Cool. You're going to start getting excited. Why are you going to get excited? Because you know your parents are very fair people. 
And what they do to the one brother, they're going to do to the other. So you know that when your folks say, we're giving your brother extra 100 rand a week, the chances are you also are going to get that 100 rand a week. Imagine if they turn around to you and say to you, good news, we're giving your brother extra 100 rand a week. And you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say, no, that's all. We just wanted you to know. And they walked out the door. It'd be flabbergasted. Life would be extremely unfair. How come my brother gets extra stuff and I don't? And the same principle applies with mathematics. When I've got an equation, or when I've got a sum with an equal sign in between, if I do something to the one side of that equal sign, I've got to do the same thing to the other. Why? Because mathematical literacy is a very fair subject. And so we have to be nice to both sides. So have a look here again. So when I look at this 14, I'm going to use a different color. Why? Because I'm allowed to. Okay, so when I you get that 40, how do I get that 40 to become a 1? Okay, what I actually did here was I said 40 divided by 40, and that gave me 1%. Now, if I did that to that side, what do I have to do to this side? Well, it's the exact same thing, isn't it? I'm also going to have to say, let's divide that side by 40. Why? We did it this side, we got to do it that side. So 28, and I'm going to divide that now by 40. Okay. I'm not going to work out the answer yet. I don't really have to work out the answer, because there's going to be more to the sum. Let's have a look. So now, I've got my 1%, and I'm now going to change it to 100%. How did I get that 1% to 100? I multiplied it by 100. Okay? So 1, to get it to 100, I'm multiplying by 100. So what I did on the one side, I've got to do on the other side. And what did I do? are multiplied by 100. So I've actually got my 28 over 40, and I'm going to now multiply that by 100. And that, folk, should give me my answer. So 40% is 28 marks, 1% is 28 over 40, so 100% will give me what that whole mark was out of. Again, let's do this on our calculator. So we take out this beautiful little calculator and we say 28, I'm going to divide that now by 40, and then I'm going to multiply it by 100, and we get an answer of 70, okay? So my answer here is 70. Should we check that? I think we should. So what we're actually saying is this, that if I were to take 28 out of 70 and change that to a percentage, I should get 40%. Let's see if we've done it right. So 28 over 70, how do I change it to a percentage? I multiply that by 100. And then, remember, we don't do the work, the calculator is going to do the work for us. So let's take out our calculator quickly, and we're going to say, right, we have 28, cool, um, out of 70, so put that over 70, and then we're going to multiply that by 100, and let's see if we've done it right. We have indeed. My answer is 40%. Okay, So 40% we said was 28, so 100% was 70. It's always lovely when you do a sum and you check it and it works out, doesn't it? Absolutely. All right. So let's have a look now. We're going to quickly summarize, and we're going to say the following. In this segment, okay, we've covered the following. We've covered the fact that there are three parts to a percentage problem. Okay? There's the whole number, there's the percentage, and then there's the new number, or the answer. 
we've worked with the sum where we found the unknown amount or the new amount. So for example, if you remember correctly, we did that sum where we said, what is 18% of 300? And we found the answer. The next thing we did was we said, we're finding the unknown percent. And we said, if I remember correctly, um, we got 30 learners out of 150. What's that as a percentage? And we calculated that. And then finally, we try to find the unknown whole number. And we said, if 40% represents 28 marks, what does 100% represent? And that's what we did there. All right. I trust the segments helped you, and it's been a great little introduction to percentages. Remember, percentages, the section on percentages, comes into all your sections. So when you write your exam at the end of the year, we're not going to simply have a section on percentages. No, it will come under your different section. You're going to find a percentage question in your finance. You're going to find a percentage question in your statistics. You're going to find a percentage question in your shape and measurement. Percentage comes up all the time. So we have to understand. And this that we've just covered in this segment are the very basic concepts. In our next session, we're going to get more complicated with the percentage. Thank you.